Uh, all right, well, thank you all for coming out today uh, uh, on this fantastic Thursday. Hope you're enjoying your January. Um, so we are here today uh, uh, basically unrolling a very important bill that was introduced just uh, last week around the issue of, uh, of tax credits in the state of Michigan. Uh, we're going to hear from a number of speakers today uh, specifically about the mega tax credits that, that our state has. Uh, and, and I hope that uh, you'll have some questions at the end for us. But I want to set the stage here that, you know, really my, my belief and my intent around introducing this legislation is, is multiple fold. I think for too long we have uh, in our state uh, been reliant on giving dollars to corporations, uh, wealthy corporations that, that don't need uh, our public uh, assistance, our public dollars here in the state of Michigan. And what we're sacrificing by giving that money to these private corporations is we're sacrificing an investment in our public infrastructure. When we talk about economic development in the state of Michigan, too often we get caught up in this uh, scam rhetoric around uh, the idea that we have to dangle money for investors and businesses to come to Michigan. Uh, but the reality is, is that talent is attracted to states that have strong uh, road infrastructure, strong schools, strong public universities, uh, and it is by investing in these public resources that we can attract talent to the state of Michigan uh, and have a sustainable economy here. Uh, if we keep on getting caught up in these, uh, you know, small, uh, these, these tax incentives to attract businesses, uh, some jobs here, some jobs there, uh, these companies will just stay in Michigan as long as it takes for that money to dry up, and then they'll go to the next highest bidder, and it will create this spiral downward of, uh, of our economy. If we want to create real sustainable growth, we should not be uh, spending that public money on these private corporations that are earning record profit, instead investing that money uh, in our public infrastructure in the state of Michigan and in making sure that we're creating a strong, vibrant economy for our state and moving Michigan forward. So I'll make some comments at the end too, but I want to uh, turn it over to my friend and colleague representative John Riley, who uh, is going to make a few comments about the content of the bill themselves. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. Uh, I am Representative John Riley, and I represent the residents of Oxford, Orion, Oakland, Addison, and Brandon Township in northeastern, northeastern Oakland County. Uh, first, I would like to thank Democratic Floor Leader Robbie for introducing Bill 5254 for his leadership on this issue. Uh, it's an honor to be one of 12 co-sponsors on this bipartisan legislation. This is an issue that has been important to me since my first term in office when I introduced legislation which, would re we, which we will reintroduce to provide more transparency in how certain corporate subsidies are awarded. I am encouraged to see bipartisan support for leveling the playing field in Michigan economic environment. Unfortunately, support for various subsidy programs over the years has also been a bipartisan endeavor, and the only way we are going to tackle this problem in the long run is bipartisan support. I also thank Mackinac Center for... Public Policy and Michigan League of Public Policy for being here and demonstrating the unity among nonpartisan organizations in recognizing that these special subsidies are not in the public's interest. House Bill 5254 is a critically important bill to rein in and end the expensive corporate mega tax credit program. Since it was introduced in 1995, the mega program has given out billions in tax credits. The mega credit program was initially created to help companies create jobs. At that time, many of the companies were struggling. But now, even though many of these same companies are making record profits, they are still receiving, receiving these lucrative payouts at the expense of the taxpayer. Despite new mega agreements ending in 2011, in some cases, Michiganders remain on the hook for these payments until year 2032. The mega credit program is not the first time or the last time the legislature authorized corporate subsidies. With other programs, the details are different, but the essence is the same, and all these, all these programs are based on a fundamental fall, flawed premise that the government picking winners and losers creates a benefit of no cost. This is a form of what, the, what we call the broken window fallacy. The classic example is when a window is broken, people think, well, this will keep the window maker in business, so that's a good thing. But they don't think about how the money could have been spent in something new and put into the economy, but instead is spent on replacing that window. The point is, we can easily see an obvious benefit and not notice a loss that is much harder to, to place. 
When we give subsidies to chosen businesses, we can see them using the money to create jobs. But people don't think about how every other business not receiving the subsidies will be affected. We don't think about how we need to collect more from everyone else to make up the difference. We don't think about how we could perhaps benefit the economy in a bigger way by giving everyone just a few, a better tax, a few dollars in a better tax environment. We don't think about everyone else on the margins losing out. In the case of mega credits, we have a program that was actually closed to new applicants years ago. So we are subsidizing companies that have already enjoyed these tax benefits for a long time and are just continuing to receive more money. This expensive program costs taxpayers an untold amount of money each year. Our bill will closely mirror legislation introduced in the Senate in September, and it will limit mega payouts to, 20, to 200 million for fiscal year 2020, limit mega payouts for 100 million for fiscal year 2021, and end mega payouts for fiscal year 2022. This is a subsidy program that has carried on far, too, far past its useful life, and ending these payouts will keep future payments in the state treasury, where it can be used hopefully for the benefit of the people of Michigan as a whole. I urge my colleagues in the Michigan House to give House Bill 5254 a vote without delay. The fiscal health of our state depends on it. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Alex Rossman. I'm the External Affairs Director at the Michigan League for Public Policy. Um, it's great to be here today and I appreciate uh, House Democratic Leader Robbie um, and Representatives Hope Polhutsky and Riley uh, for having this conversation and introducing this legislation. I'm also grateful that our colleagues from the Mackinac Center for Public Policy are here as well. Um, we definitely at times come from different political vantage points and so it's nice when we can stand by, uh, side by side on an issue. And I think that when we do agree on an issue, that should be of particular note to the people of Michigan and the legislature that there is widespread uh, support of this legislation. And that's certainly reinforced by the bipartisan group here today um, and co-sponsoring the bill. Uh, these corporate tax breaks undercut what residents and businesses really value. And it's been, been going on for too long and it's compromised um, our state budget and all of the things that that money could be invested in instead. Um, and at the Michigan League for Public Policy, we're certainly uh, unapologetically pro-revenue and, and constantly advocating for ways to bring more revenue into the state and state budget for investment, but also looking at smarter ways to keep revenue from going out of, of the state budget. And this is certainly uh, a piece relative to that. Uh, by supporting this common sense legislation to end the expensive mega credit program by 2022, this bipartisan group of legislators are standing up for the needs of all Michiganders. Um, in terms of looking at uh, our, our fiscal landscape, uh, our organization in particular uh, is very aware of the significant business tax cuts that were made in 2011 under Governor Rick Snyder, and we're uh, literally and figuratively still paying for those today. Um, they led to a significant reduction in the state earned income tax credit, um, which we support, and also led to uh, uh, reductions in education funding and underinvestment in our roads, infrastructure, and water systems. Um, and certainly at a time where we're technically still negotiating the past state budget, um, and in part that's due to a, a lack of revenue, this is an important way to consider um, ways to keep more money in the state coffers and going to the priorities and things that, again, residents and businesses alike really value quality schools, safe neighborhoods, um, healthy environment, and safe drinking water. So we're certainly glad to be here today. Um, and I commend Democratic Floor Leader Robbie and all 12 of uh, House Bill 5254's co-sponsors for uh, bringing this issue to light. Thank you. Hey, uh, James Homan at the Mackinac Center. So mega tax credits have been a raw deal for the state and it's great to see lawmakers taking steps to curtail them. I mean, there have been uh, huge uh, burdens on taxpayers over the past three decades from this program. And when, uh, uh, when you take a close inspection about the results, you'll find uh, economists found that the state would have been better off if it had spent its revenue on its services. It's a jobs program that doesn't create jobs. And in fact, it was overhyped from the beginning uh, these deals rarely went out as, uh, as planned. In fact, 98% of every deal the state made 
fell short of job expectations. And administrators were given far too much discretion to inflate the costs of these programs, uh, or the costs of these deals. Um, and because of that, for this year, mega credits are going to cost more to the state than the state police. Uh, worse, uh, despite handing out billions of dollars, voters cannot be told who is collecting these, uh, how much each company is collecting. Lawmakers made this confidential taxpayer information a decade ago in order to keep these payments a secret. Now, handing out uh, taxpayer money to select companies from the state treasury is fundamentally unfair to the workers and the businesses who pay their fair, their fair share of taxes. And in fact, it is especially unfair when the state taxes one business in order to put that money into a competitor's pocket. So in short, these are unfair, ineffective, and expensive uh, uh, deals, and I'm really excited that lawmakers are looking to scale them back. Thank you. Well, we had a number of awesome speakers. I just wanted to make sure to highlight that uh, Representative Hope and Representative Pohutsky, who are here today, I want to thank them uh, for being here as well. Uh, and, and just highlight that actually for this bill, we were able to get an equal number of Republican and Democratic co-sponsors. So you saw that you heard that there were 12 total co-sponsors for this, six Dems, six Republicans. So we have a great bipartisan coalition that's coming together around this bill in particular. And I just want to end by saying this. I think what we've heard from our different speakers today underlines, uh, uh, underlines the point that mega tax credits are not working for Michigan. Uh, they are a very expensive and bloated program. They take government resources, shroud them in secrecy, and pick winners and losers uh, uh, in our economy. We can't move our economy forward in the state of Michigan if we continue to do this. What we will see is a continued reliance on certain large industries. And what ends up happening is are things like the recession that we've seen over the last few years, where we're putting all of our resources in just a few companies. What we need is a diverse economy. And if we want a diverse economy, we can't keep picking winners and losers uh, in our economic landscape. Moreover, if we're going to make the kinds of public investments that we need in order to attract talent to Michigan. One of the things that I'm really sort of tired of hearing is everybody who's saying, well, we don't have talent. There's no talent in Michigan. Well, part of the reason that there's no talent in Michigan is because our roads are bad and our schools are struggling and our public universities are underfunded. And if we're serious about attracting talent to our state, then we need to invest in those resources. At the end of the day, people have this false narrative that if you can just attract one big business to Michigan, the talent will follow. That's not how it works. Talent finds a place that they want to be. People want to locate where their kids can go to a good school, where they can drive on good roads. And businesses go where the talent is. So let's make Michigan a talent capital again by undoing some of these bad deal uh, deals with these uh, corporate tax giveaways and reinvesting that money uh, in, in, the, in the public.